In this video, how the Dutch government built a very unpopular highway through a popular park in a very dubious way. And how this government wants to widen the same highway now. The 1950s and 60s in the Netherlands. There is rapid car growth among the population and highways are predicted to become clogged with traffic jams. That's why plans are being made to build a highway near Utrecht to get a new north-south connection in 1974. However, this highway has to run through the Amelisweert, which is a very popular park among the residents of Utrecht. And I have to say, this is a very nice park to cycle in. Protests against the highway broke out, and it was decided to adjust the route so that the highway only removed the edge of the park. However, the protest against the highway continued, and there was even a committee set up to save the forest. The plans were delayed, but the tensions kept rising. Because it was deemed an important highway by the government, the province and the municipality, which both were against the highway plans, were unable to stop the plans from the construction of the highway. The preservation of the Amelisweert Park was therefore entirely in the hands of the citizens of Utrecht. One of the activists wrote a diary, of which I summarized the following. On Friday evening, September 17th, 1982, the threat of the felling has become so great that we have set up tents and equipment in the forest in preparation for the build of a little village of huts. Guards will live in a little village of huts, so they can warn the others in times of threat of the forest. However, the police immediately intervened and pulled everything out of the ground, without explanation, and took the items with them. That night, about 30 people slept in the forest. The next day, after a protest in the city, about 2,000 people went into the forest and the little village of huts was built in no time. However, on Sunday morning, these cabins were destroyed and set on fire by a special police force and that's why we started building the huts at the top of the trees. And it worked. On Tuesday, the police tried to clear the forest again, but failed. September 24th, 1982 this morning, the forest was declared a restricted area. As a result, no one can enter the forest anymore. At the moment, there are only 600 people in the forest who can defend it. At half past 9 a.m., there should have been a preliminary injunction in the courtroom, but it has been postponed until half past 1 p.m. so that Rijkswaterstaat, the state-owned company, can prepare its defense better. Half past 9. The police forces entered the forest and cleared it violently. As a result, there were 10 head injuries. After the police force cleared the forest, an army of 70 people with chainsaws and other machinery, including the three largest bulldozers in Europe at the time, went in. At quarter past 3 p.m., the judge asked Rijkswaterstaat to stop blogging. Then, the meeting was suspended for 15 minutes, after which the message came that the whole forest already had been felled. And so, after 11 and a half years of protest, the forest was cut down. A total of 596 trees, up to 200 years old, have fallen. Keep in mind this story is from the protesters' perspective, though it may be that it is a distorted image of what actually happened. But because I was not there myself and I could not find better sources, I told it anyway. Vers van de pers en zojuist ondertekend het nieuwe tracébesluit voor de ring Utrecht. Ik ben er heel blij mee, want Utrecht is de draaischijf van Nederland. After much discussion and demonstration, plans for the widening of the highway have been approved. However, this decision has been appealed on the basis of nitrogen emissions laws in the Netherlands. That's why a new plan has been made in 2022. This plan still has to be approved by the Council of State. However, there are protests for the plan. Four lanes will be added to the highway. And if they want to widen the highway, these trees have to go. And the whole project will cost 1.2 billion euros. The biggest problem and advantage lies in this stretch of highway. Here, the road has been built under the groundwater level. There is a plastic foil under the asphalt to prevent flooding. However, when this highway gets reconstructed, foil will be damaged and the highway will flood. For this, the plan is to force 70 meter long screen walls into the ground in order to stop the groundwater from entering the construction site. This means a lot of... In addition, there will be many years of construction sounds and trucks in the surrounding area. However, the people of Utrecht will also get something in return. A part of the highway will be built on the ground, which restores the connection between the city and the park. What do you think of this plan? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching this video.